Another superb structuring technique is what I call a decision event tree. A decision event tree is a diagram that graphically shows choices and their outcomes at different junctures in alternative sequences or chain of events. If you've ever taken a college business course on decision making, then you may be familiar with a similar technique by another name called impact analysis. The steps to creating a decision event tree are listed on the slide. It is a powerful analytic tool and we'll demonstrate that with a few exercises. The decision event tree graphically shows choices and their outcomes at different junctures in alternative sequences or chains of events. Each sequence or chain of event is a separate scenario. The dilemma posed by Frank Stockton's famous story, The Lady or the Tiger, in which a man must choose between two doors, one leading to a beautiful lady, the other to a ravenous tiger, serves admirably to illustrate the decision event tree. The tree portrays two alternative scenarios or sequences of events. A, open door one and get the lady, or B, open door two and get the tiger. This example demonstrates the two immutable universal characteristics of a decision event tree. By mutually exclusive, we mean that if you choose door one, then you can't pick door two. A decision is made to pursue a particular path. And there's a consequence, an event, for each decision. By collectively exhaustive, we mean that the alternatives at each branch incorporate all possibilities. No other options are possible, either decisions or events, at that point in the sequence or scenario. There is no third door in this scenario. And there is only one consequence for choosing a door. You don't get anything else but the tiger, and ultimately death, if you choose door two. Let's use the principles involved in constructing and using a decision event tree by examining another example. Construct a decision event tree to diagram this oversimplified sequence of events following a woman's blind date with a man. Pause the video to give yourself time to construct your decision event tree. Each branch of the tree presents the alternative options that are mutually exclusive. If we pick one, we can't pick the other. And collectively exhaustive. All available options have been considered. There are no other possibilities. Note that the tip of each branch marks the end of a scenario. There are five tip ends and five scenarios. The last bullet on the slide reminds us of a unique way a decision of entry can structure problems for us that no other techniques can. It dissects a scenario into its sequential events. It shows clearly the cause and effect linkages. It shows which decisions events are dependent on others. It shows where the linkages are strongest and weakest. It enables us to visually compare how one scenario differs from another. Most importantly, it reveals alternatives we might otherwise not perceive. Let's try another exercise. There are two major factors, whether the weapons are on board the ship and whether the weapons will reach the terrorist. There are three outcomes. The threat from the terrorist will increase, remain the same, or decrease. Construct a decision event tree to represent this scenario. Pause the video to give yourself time to use the information on the slide to construct your decision event tree. Here is the decision event tree, the analytic roadmap that portrays the various scenarios for these factors and outcomes. There are 12, and only 12 scenarios. Indeed, a decision event tree could more accurately be called a scenario tree. As the supervisor of the analyst working this problem, I call the analyst into my office, point at the yes under the weapons aboard ship, and ask, what is the evidence that the weapons and ammo are on the ship? Well, says the analyst, the boxes loaded aboard the ship are the same size and carry the same fruit label. It's the same ship used in the last shipment, and is headed for the same destination as before. I see. Now I point at the no under weapons aboard ship, and I ask, what is the evidence that the weapons and ammo are not on board the ship? Huh? We have evidence that they are on board. I know, I say, but what evidence would we see if the weapons were not on board? Well, the analyst ponders, they're pretty heavy, so the ship would be high out of the water. Have you asked for a photo of the ship? No, the analyst replies. Well, I tell him, why don't you do that? I point at the yes under terrorists receive weapons. And what will the evidence be that the terrorists receive the weapons and the ammo? Well, there will be lots of activity in the terrorist camp. 
Lights on at night in the buildings, firing at the practice range, movement of trucks. Now I point at the no under the terrorists receive weapons. And what will be the evidence that the terrorists do not receive the weapons? No activity, no lights, no practice firing, no trucks. Do you see how valuable a tree can be in guiding analysts and ensuring that consideration is given to the alternative scenarios? That's the immense value of a decision event tree. It focuses your attention on the alternatives, if you have the mind to do so. The tree enables the analyst to identify various nodes that comprise the scenarios, to analyze each node in the tree separately, to analyze each scenario and its outcome, to eliminate scenarios that are implausible or impossible, to identify intelligence gaps, which the analyst seeks to fill by issuing intelligence collection requirements and expanding research and analysis of existing information. In this lesson, we've discussed both matrices and decision event trees, there are, of course, trade-offs between trees and matrices. These trade-offs become evident when we convert a matrix into a decision event tree and vice versa. Let's see this for ourselves by converting the problem we structured into a matrix into a decision event tree. Once again, pause the video to give yourself time to convert the matrix you see on the slide into a decision event tree. Here's my decision event tree diagram of the problem. Now let's try converting the warning matrix into a decision event tree. Again, pause the video to give yourself time to construct your decision event tree. I personally find a tree less insightful than a matrix for analyzing the warning analyst dilemma. But again, it's a matter of personal choice. Which is preferable, a matrix or a tree? Depends on the nature of the problem and what the analyst is seeking. I always recommend experimenting with both techniques because the advantages and disadvantages of each then become clear and will inform our decision as to which is more useful in analyzing a given problem. We've discussed and experimented with two different techniques during this lesson. Remember that structuring a problem is the first step. It organizes the elements of a problem, it doesn't analyze them. You have to do the analysis, but if you structure a problem, it should make analyzing the problem a whole lot easier. I hope you are practicing your application of these techniques. Your ability to apply these techniques will be tested in the final exam.